Hello everyone and welcome to another short video on our own devices. I'm Jean Messier and today we're having a look at a really fun flea market find. This is a Wilkinson fire alarm. This was introduced in the 1950s and it was one of the first standalone home fire alarms that didn't need to be connected to mains power or any other system, basically making it the precursor to the modern smoke alarm. However, unlike those, this is entirely mechanical and the way that this works is actually pretty neat. So I thought we might have a closer look at this. So this was based on two patents, one by Herbert Redfern Wilkinson and another by Archibald Hammond Wilson, both granted in 1956. And this was manufactured by Everden Company of Birmingham, England, which was founded in 1809 as Richard Everden's son and manufactured all sorts of metal products, including brass, copper and cast iron hinges, bedsteads, chandeliers, doorknobs, plumbing fittings, things like that. And on the inside of the box here, it says that the box itself was made by Boxfoldia, which was founded in 1920 by one Charles Henry Foyle, also of Birmingham, who was the inventor of the commercial folding carton. And a folding carton to hold a product is something that seems so simple and intuitive that it's easy to forget that somebody actually had to invent that. Anyway, let's have a closer look at this and see how it works. So on the outside, we have a little loop for hanging this from a nail or a screw. And the way that you arm this mechanism, like I said, it's entirely mechanical, is by winding up the bell clockwise until it stops. And the mechanism is held in the armed position by these two pins sticking out the side, one of which is fixed and the other movable. And these are held together by this little folded sheet metal link, which is covered in Wilson's patent. And inserted between these links is a little rod of fusible or low temperature melting alloy. And the idea is that when this is exposed to heat from a fire, that pin melts, releases the links, which releases the pin and... And according to the instruction booklet that comes with this unit, this alloy melts at a temperature of 125 degrees Fahrenheit or 52 degrees Celsius, which means that unlike the fire grenade that we had a look at in a previous video, this doesn't have to be held directly into a roaring fire for it to operate. In fact, you could probably set this off by dunking it in warm water. Now, I don't know exactly which low temperature melting alloy this uses. There are lots of different formulations, and none of the ones that I was able to find had a melting point of exactly 125 degrees Fahrenheit. But the closest possibilities are Fields Metal, which is 32.5% bismuth, 51% indium, and 16.5% tin, which melts at 144 degrees Fahrenheit or 62 degrees Celsius. Woods Metal, which is 50% bismuth, 26.7% lead, 13.3% tin, and 10% cadmium, which melts at 158 degrees Fahrenheit or 70 degrees Celsius, and Ceralloy 117, which is 44.7% bismuth, 22.6% lead, 8.3% tin, 19.1% indium, and 5.3% cadmium, which melts at 117 degrees Fahrenheit or 47.2 degrees Celsius. And since most low temperature melting alloys have very similar ingredients, only in different proportions, Unless I do a full chemical breakdown of the pin, uh, I can't really tell exactly which alloy it is, but it's probably one of those or something very similar. Right, let's actually open this up to show you how it works. And you do that by unthreading the bell counterclockwise. And so you can see that just like a clock, this is driven by a coiled spring, which drives this larger gear, which runs a smaller ratchet gear, which drives the clapper via a pull or escapement mechanism. And when I depress the lever, you can see that it interrupts the escapement by simply camming against it. So very simple clockwork mechanism. Now, another neat feature of this is this little flag that pops out once the spring has wound down to tell you that you need to rewind and reset the alarm. And as you can see, this is connected to a spring and a little lever that sits against the coiled spring so that as it unwinds and expands, it will push the flag out as so. And the last little detail I can show you inside here is this little nylon block, which holds a spare rod of low temperature melting alloy in order to reset the link and the alarm. And interestingly, you probably would need this not only to reset the alarm after it's been in a fire, but due to regular wear and tear. Because if we look at the link that was actually installed on this alarm, you'll see that the pin is highly distorted. This is because this link has probably been under continuous spring pressure since this was packaged in the late 1950s, early 1960s, and the metal has gradually crept over the years, though it hasn't failed yet. 
though if it does, then there is a spare pin for you to replace it. So overall, a very clever, very elegant, and probably very effective little device. I love looking at things like this. I love mechanical solutions to problems that today we would probably very easily solve using electronics. Now that's all I have for you today. Bit of a short one today, but as soon as I saw this at an antique sale and saw how it worked, I knew that I had to show it to you guys. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time in another video where we'll look at yet more fantastic devices just like this one. Until then, I'm Jean Messier from Our Own Devices. Have a great day.